TV. Today's video is about how to deal with negative criticism. Just last week, I received a negative criticism from a blog visitor, and he was basically dissing me and saying a bunch of not so nice things. It inspired me to create this video because I believe that negative criticism is something that all of us face, no matter what we do, and it's important to learn how to handle them. So today, I want to share 5 tips on what to do when you face negative criticism. My first tip is to look at the intent of the criticism. In every communication, there are always two parts. The first part is the message, what the person really wants to communicate. The second part is the execution, how the message is expressed, the words used to articulate the message itself. So ideally, the message and the execution should be 100% aligned, but sometimes they aren't. Let's take for example a wife saying to her husband, Eh, I think your pants look really ugly. Now, this comment sounds nasty, actually really rude, but this may not be the wife's intent at all. Maybe what she really is trying to say is, I love you and I want you to look your best when meeting other people so that other people will think the best of you. Take for another example, a boss saying to his subordinate, this report has way too many errors. So again, this comment may sound sort of demeaning like, are you serious? Okay, but maybe what the boss is really trying to say is, you have potential and I believe in you, but we can't be making mistakes like this if you want to be promoted by the end of the year. Now, sometimes comments may come across as negative, but it may not be the person's intent. It may simply be the person's style of expression, how he or she was brought up since young. Like for example, if someone was brought up around parents that were negative all the time or critical, then that would usually be the way the child learns how to express his or her comments or feelings. Or it can be a cultural thing. For example, in Asia, it's sort of strange to openly give compliments. Like usually people, especially people of the older generation, they tend to express their concern through criticism or cautionary advice rather than I love you or hugs. If someone were to do that, usually people would think like they are strange or like something's wrong up here. So when you receive a criticism, don't jump at it yet. Look at the intent first. My question to you, based on what you know about this person, and what you can see about this situation, is this person trying to be malicious and trying to tear you down? Or is this person simply trying to give well-intended feedback, albeit in a negative manner? Now, if this person is trying to be malicious, please ignore him or her. There is no need to invest time or energy on someone who's trying to tear you down. The best thing you can do here is to be happy. Focus on the positive things. On the other hand, if this person is simply trying to be well-intended, just is expressed in a negative fashion, then we want to try to see what this critic is trying to say. Which brings me to tip number two. Identify the underlying message of the criticism. Once a reader told me that I should write shorter articles and he was too lazy to read my articles otherwise. Now, remembering that every communication, there's a message, there's an execution. When I look at the underlying message, I thought perhaps he's really trying to say, I prefer posts with shorter tips, so please write more of such posts. Now, whether I want to apply this critique is a different thing altogether, but understanding the underlying message helps me to tend to the criticism more appropriately, as opposed to reacting defensively. So look beyond the words used. Okay, this is just the surface layer. You want to get to the core message. So beyond any harsh words that might be used in this criticism, what do you think this person is really trying to convey to you? So if at any point you're not really clear what the person is trying to convey with the criticism, then ask questions. A simple question could be, can you tell me more about what you mean? And this can quickly clear up any misunderstanding and help you get more insight into what the person is trying to tell you. Tip number three, apply the relevant bits. Now, just because you're getting a criticism doesn't mean you need to apply it 100%. Pick and select the parts that apply to you. So with my reader's critique on him being too lazy to read my articles if they are too long and not short enough for himself, Personally, I continue to write in-depth articles today, 
And that's because my personal direction for PE Personal Excellence is to provide the most in-depth, highest quality material on growth. I don't necessarily restrict myself to a word count per se, but rather what is it I want to deliver. At the same time, I do realize the importance of being concise. So over the years, I've learned to focus more on my key messages and to cut away any unimportant stuff to deliver the same message. Think about your criticism in the context of your goals and values. Which part of this criticism is relevant to you? Apply that. For the rest, simply discard them. There is no need to feel obligated to apply something when it's not even aligned with yourself to begin with. My fourth tip is to thank the critic. If the critic was trying to be malicious, please ignore him or her. But if the person had good intentions, it would be nice to take a few seconds to thank him or her. Besides you being gracious, not everyone takes the effort to give a critique, so thanking the person lets him or her know that you appreciate the feedback and concern. And it can be something really simple, like, thank you for your feedback, and I appreciate that. I agree with what you said about X, and I'm intending to work on Y moving forward. My fifth and last tip is to use the 99 to 1 rule. Now, I've noticed that when it comes to negative criticism, a lot of us tend to allocate the bulk of our energy on this negative criticism. And sometimes it can be because we are harsh on ourselves, we want to be sure that we are doing things the best that we can, and we want to be sure that we are giving the best that we can to other people. Now, 99 to 1 rule is a rule that I talk about in my article on empty vessels, which is instead of allocating the majority of our energy, even 99% of our energy on negative criticism, focus this 99% of your energy on positive compliments instead. And why is that? I found that when we focus too much on negative criticism, it tends to make us focus on our own faults, weaknesses, things that we don't like about ourselves, and trying to constantly be in this chase to mend them, to address them, okay, to fill the gaps. And I found growth through this method, it tends to be incremental and there is diminishing returns over time. On the other hand, when we focus on the things we are good in, the things that we are doing well, our strengths, our talents, that is a lot more empowering and powerful. This is where we truly get the inspiration, the energy and achieving exponential growth. Now, it's not to say, oh, don't listen to negativity at all, you know, just ignore what people say. That's not true because we can learn from criticism. But what I'm saying here is to focus on positivity. So as opposed to 99% of our energy being focused on negative criticism, I'm encouraging you to dedicate majority of your energy on positivity, on compliments, things that you're doing well, and then to allocate that remaining energy on addressing any issues, any negative criticism that you may be getting. So my question to you is, what are three compliments that you have received before? Okay, about yourself, your abilities, your work, your talents, what you're doing well in? Focus on these compliments okay, and build on your strengths and let them become even bigger strengths and truly allowing you to blossom to your higher self and who you can be. I have some related articles for you. Firstly, why criticism rocks. Personalexcellence.co slash blog slash why criticism is good. Okay, hyphenated with each word. And the second article is how to deal with critical people. Personalexcellence.co slash blog slash critical hyphen people. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Okay, it'll encourage me to create more videos like this for you. Be sure to subscribe, Celeste.tv, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!